Hi, everyone, and welcome to Outside the Ropes. I'm Tom Hannafin, and I'm joined by Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns, who this Sunday, April 16th, live on pay-per-view and Fight TV at Rebellion, will be challenging Ace and Bay of Bullet Club for the Impact World Tag Team titles in Ultimate X, something you two know quite a bit about, saving yourself included. I think you've been at about 486 of these things at this point. Yes, and I a lost couple, count. Yeah, a couple significant memories, and this is also big. It's the first time that Ultimate X has seen an Impact World Tag Team title defense since 2015. So what does this stir up for you guys? A lot of memories for me. I was actually part of the first two Ultimate X matches, so it just brings back memories of, of all that going down, setting up the X and seeing it for the first time, having problems with the structure. You know, when we originally set it up the first time, they used these thin posts, then they put them inside the ring posts, and they just kind of bent in. I remember Frankie was actually, Frankie Gazarian, Impact Wrestling Superstar, was part of that match too, and he was the first one to test out the X, and as soon as he hung, from the ropes, all four posts just free, just bent right in. So we were kind of scrambling, didn't know what to do. It was pretty scary at first. And just when I hear Ultimate X, it's always that memory that pops up into my mind at first. Alex, when I think about Ultimate X and the Motor City Machine Guns, I think about your legendary series with beer money. I mean, and now you fast forward to what Ace and Bay are doing with Bullet Club. You guys have seen everything in the tag team ranks. What do you think of the evolution of the tag team division here at Impact? When we first started competing, we were by far and away the smallest tag team, by far and away. And because of that, we had to customize our style. And I think that's part of the reason we were called the Machine Guns too, is because it was a rat-a-tat-tat style, right? We were so fast and so quick, we just had to strike at every opportunity from every direction. And I think that style of tag team wrestling has become more dominant if you look at the modern wrestling landscape, but certainly we were the pioneers and it was something that was born out of necessity. Very interesting to see because you guys have been a tag team since 2006 and last year, Alex, you returned to Impact Wrestling. A lot was stirred up with Bullet Club. Jay White obviously got your attention and then shortly thereafter, the Motor City Machine Guns were back and clicking. For, for you, what did it mean to have that opportunity again? I think coming back and having my first match back in Impact Wrestling against Jamie was a huge opportunity for me and for him, for him to test himself and really for me to test myself as well and prove that I could go with one of the best in the world. And I do think Jamie probably is the best in the world. And I don't know how many people know this, but we had a group many years ago called Search and Destroy. It was us, Jonathan Gresham, and Jamie. Jamie lived with me for a year and a half. So to go toe to toe with him, it's like fighting your younger brother, right? Like you want to hurt him, but you don't want to hurt him that bad. But then again, you do kind of want to hurt him that bad, right? Because he just pisses you off. To hang with him in the ring and hang with him on the mic, to me, that proved to everybody else something that I already knew. I am one of the best in the world. And I'm a byproduct of being around greatness too, which includes Jamie, it includes Gresham, it includes this guy too. So I think it was inevitable that the Machine Guns were gonna reunite because our careers, no matter how many times they veer off track, always intersect. And every time they intersect, it's like scar tissue, it just mends over top a little bit stronger. The match between yourself and Jay White, I, I thought it was a match of the year candidate in 2022, one of the best I've ever gotten a call. Uh, speaking of history, uh, Chris, on April 9th, very recently, you celebrated your 20-year anniversary of your Impact debut, and very recently, it was announced on Sports Illustrated that you two have re-signed with Impact Wrestling. Uh, you even tweeted it, home sweet home. How does this feel? Yeah, no, it feels good. It was a pretty natural decision to make. I've actually been under contract here since 2019. I'm not sure if anyone knew that or not, but you know, it felt pretty natural to want to stay here. And you know, it just makes it that much sweeter that have my tag team partner, Alex Shelley with me, signed contract. I got someone I can rely on, someone I can count on, someone to watch my back. And you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's great to have him with me now. What do you think of Ace and Bay? Not just what they've done as tag team champions, just as a whole. The first match they had as a team was against you two this past summer. Those two are, without a doubt, the future of Impact Wrestling. I see a lot of the machine guns in them, just like coming up, they're about our size, similar style, and just having that urge to want to prove yourself. I think that's what they want to do. They really want to prove themselves, and I think they have just an extremely bright future here. No, they've already gotten off to a great start. Now, Chris, you're a former Impact World Champion back in 2013, one of the brightest moments in the history of this company, and then this past year, Alex, you had a chance to challenge Josh Alexander for the Impact World Championship. That also was a hell of a match. 
Now that Josh has relinquished the championship, it's set up this big matchup for this Sunday at Rebellion, Kushida versus Steve Macklin for the Impact World title. Has Josh relinquishing the title stirred up anything in your mind in regards to the World Championship? Not necessarily, because the way he lost the title was circumstance. And quite frankly, uh, there's a number of athletes I can say this about, like they're one in a million that are under contract to impact wrestling. But Josh had been going hard for a year. And I used to think that pro wrestling was so destructive on the body, and certainly it is. And certainly the reason we train is so that we can go in the ring and do what we do. But life happens. and injuries and pain are a part of life. It just caught up with him. That's not to say he's not gonna come back. That's not to say he's not gonna be world champion again. He very well could be. When I wrestled Josh, I don't use the term lost. I either win or I learn. And I learned what I need to do to become a world champion. But it's not my shot right now. It's Kushida's shot against Steve Macklin for that vacant title. And I can't think of anybody, present company included, uh, that deserves a shot at the world title more than Kushida. And I don't think American fans like fully grasp how much this guy sacrificed for pro wrestling. Like he moved to Mexico on his own on a tourist visa when he was in his early 20s to learn pro wrestling, not knowing any Spanish. Just thinking that this is the way some of the Japanese wrestlers like Liger and Tajiri have done it, so I'm gonna do it this way too. And then he got noticed and then he came back to Japan and he paid every dues you possibly could time and time again. My career obviously is intertwined with his as much as it is Saban's. And I've seen his growth for the past 11 years firsthand. And I was a part of that growth and I'm proud to be a part of that growth too. Now it's his time to prove that he is world championship material, not just junior heavyweight, but world champion. And I can't wait to watch him beat Macklin. Of course, when he does, I would be honored if I got the first title shot, but it's his time, right? It seems like you three, as a part of Time Machine, have a wonderful time. It's been a handful of opportunities to see you guys in trios action, but it seems like you guys have so much fun when you're out there. And one thing very recently, we had a chance to be back in Canada for the first time in three years. Windsor, Ontario, Canada, St. Clair College was so kind to us. And after that first night when we did Sacrifice, after we went off the air, Chris, there was this great moment where you showed all the fans in terms of the, I'm gonna butcher it, but the Motor City Machine Guns hand sign and that you guys are pointing to Detroit. It's supposed to be the state of Michigan for those that don't know. And then you did a gesture to say that, well, we're also looking at Windsor right over here. Yeah. We're paying respect. Not a lot of people know this about Kushida and, and yourselves. It's very well known. You guys have worked in Windsor quite a bit, but Kushida lived in Windsor for quite some time. What was the experience like for him here? You would be able to answer that better than I would. Do you remember when we yeah. first met him, though? I Well, I actually first met him when I was on tour for All Japan Pro Wrestling. So I had a match that. with him. Yeah, it was actually a little bit before that, but I didn't realize at the time that like who he was or what he was going to be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, the first time I saw him was he against Akito Hidaka, who is obviously like my mentor and part of the reason the machine guns exist in the first place, right? Because he actually assembled them in Zero One Max in 2006. So we had met Kushida or seen him previously, but we first met him collectively in 2009. Uh, December 2009, he was on excursion, living in Windsor, living in an apartment building that Scott Demore owned. And he was making the rounds. So the same way he did in Mexico, where he just traveled the Indies and wrestled as much as he could against as many different people as he could, did the same thing in Canada for about two years. When he came back, he had a new look. He applied different skills. Did you ever see what he looked like when he came back? When to, he first came back. To Japan. I mean, he looked like shorts, yeah. kick pads. Yeah. Very similar to the gear that I was wearing. Do you remember what wearing. his hair looked like? <laughs> like yours? Yeah. So he <laughs> Kind he, of a combination he, of both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he literally looked like the third machine gun then. And he was really, really good. I remember the first time I saw him wrestle in the States. Again, I had seen him wrestle before, but he wrestled Petey Williams, who's obviously somebody that we know very well and is very known in this company and Impact Wrestling. And he killed it. I was like, this guy's absolutely amazing. So to see him go back to Japan, he was wrestling for Smash at the time, right? So he was getting matches against like the upper echelon, like New Japan guys as well. And he hung with them. And it's like, wow, this guy's really, really good. So when I left 
then TNA in 2012, I signed a contract with New Japan. And when I went over there, right away, naturally, we started training together. And we were already teaming together in six and eight mans. And our chemistry, because he speaks good English too, started to develop to the point where the company decided, you guys would be a really, really good team. And the style was very reminiscent of the machine guns right away. But he brings a totally different skill set than we do, honestly, because he was trained by Nobuhiko Takata. So Kushida's actually got an amateur mixed martial arts background as well, which is something we don't have. So when you watch him, he gels just enough with us while also being different. And I think that's what really, truly makes him special is he is a jack of all trades. Chris, obviously you guys are in Kushida's corner, in spirit, that is, when it comes to rebellion, Kushida versus Steve Macklin for the Impact World Championship. I do have to ask the counter is that, what do you think Impact Wrestling would look like if Steve Macklin walks out of rebellion as the Impact World Champion? I think Kushida would represent this company very well, and he can take that title all around the world. He can take the Impact World Championship to New Japan and represent Impact over there. It doesn't matter. He could go anywhere. But with Steve Macklin, you know, I don't know, he's just kind of a down and dirty kind of guy. And you know, do you want that kind of guy representing Impact Wrestling? I don't know. We're gonna have to see how it goes down at Rebellion. And uh, one last comment on your ultimate X match for the Impact World Tag Team titles against Ace and Bay. Alex, how do you feel about it going into Sunday? Oh man, so the ultimate X to me, and I'll just leave it very succinctly, is the world's most dangerous game of capture the flag. We're really good at capture the flag. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of experience. Shelly. Sabin, the Motor City Machine Guns, don't miss them this Sunday at Rebellion.